Okay, we're on YouTube. Okay, good morning, everybody. We got only nine attendants yet, so. Good morning, Henry. So, we're going to record. Okay, I think I already recorded. I got the echo. Let me see. Yes. Can you hear me? Good. Okay. Yes, we can. Yeah. So I um yesterday I did a, a class uh, on the same subject matter or same artist master uh, Ya Ming um, from Nanjing. I'm hearing myself. Interesting. Where is it? Okay, I muted. I'm hearing the echo. Sorry. No, fine. Okay, so um, we're going to explore um, <clears throat> more on the um, method and the uh, um, artist conception of uh, um, contemporary painting uh, uh, on um, cherry blossom or spring tree blossoms. Um, okay. The technique we used yesterday was the splatting uh, with a, a, a font tour, a barbecue brush. Um, the reason I use this is that uh, it creates very um, controllable marks, marks with uh, uh, rounded dots uh, without a, you know, uh, Spin, uh, uh, like if you use a regular uh, brush with long bristle, you want you might um, splatter all over the uh, on your table, even on your clothes. So I, I mean, I'm not wearing my garment today, just in case. <laughs> um, so we'll was was we'll do it again, but uh, a little differently. Um, and the paper I will use I, I used was a very cheap practice paper, uh, very thin uh, Japanese rice paper. It's only uh, nine and a half by thirteen, I think. Uh, so it's not a very large paper. I cannot get even uh, you know I cannot get it larger. It's just a practice paper, like a uh, but it's perfect for for um, Zoom. Uh, so today we're going to use, um, because you're an advanced student, I will use the professional grade paper. Uh, we'll use raw shuan or unsized single shuan. If you have uh, other brands like a red star, it's the best uh, if you can use that. Uh, or uh, cotton shuan is a very, uh, another variation. There are some, some other, you know, uh, Variations. Uh, double shuan might be too thick, so single, unsized, absorbent. Unsized means absorbent shuan is what we use. Um, and this paper I used yesterday is this semi sized kind of, so you can see a little hard edge. Um, it, it smears, but it, it's kind of not, that's why I like it. It has a, a nice effect. But on, on raw shine, you, you might have the same effect because it creates a watermark, watermark between dots or uh, uh, lines or strokes. Um, if you do one layer and then uh, wait a few minutes, uh, do another layer, it will not um, merge together because it will keep separate. Um, that's the advantage of using raw shuan. Size shuan uh, is good for um, gombi, you know, graded, gra gra gradation kind of wash. 
like a watercolor paper, you know, it's not uh, to keep the stroke or the, the marks separated, uh, you know. So this this paper is uh, good to record any any gesture, any uh, brush stroke, uh, so you cannot change it. That, that would take advantage of that. It's not a, um, a problem for, for Chinese uh, uh, oriented um, art. You know, we, 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 we have to live with some accident. So, you know, if you got splatter on the, in the sky, it, I just uh, call them flying pedals, okay? Or flying uh, like flakes, okay? Um, so to prepare, I, I'll use, uh, uh, let me just get directly to the, because we may have to wait uh, the paper to dry while we uh, do other things. Okay. So I'll get to, okay, I, I just did uh, this test uh, moments ago. Yes with this paper, <clears throat> the raw shrine, or well, n size <clears throat> single shrine. So we cut, we don't have to use uh, too much, uh, too large size. We just cut to, uh, let me see. Can uh, find my, Knife. Let's use a scissors, maybe. It should be somewhere. I, I, my worst knife. Knife. Oh, I couldn't find the same. Thank you, Victoria. Just a great helper. Thank you. Um, so we cut that into. Half and then again. So that's about uh, um, nine and a half by thirteen and a half, or something like that. All right. Okay, I got two two uh, ideas I explored. Let me let me tell you the result first. I already know. Um, one is with this uh, transparent white ink. Some of you may already get from uh, uh, our online store. It's a size um, made of. Uh, it didn't say. Uh, traditionally, we use uh, alum. I think there's you know like a white powder. Um, residual, you can tell it's uh, mineral, you know, it's, it could be um, on and, and uh, uh, with a gelatin maybe, we don't know exactly what's in it, but uh, it creates uh, um, quite good resist, um, like a masking, you know, uh, effect. So it, uh, I used the, this uh, same brush, applied this, uh, but I, I, I got some blobs because too too much and it created a hard hard mark hard edged mark okay another secret thing is a traditional um, homemade size or semi size um, some of you may already have is a health drink it's it's a soil milk we made from scratch today i think victoria is passing me some pictures i, I didn't receive uh, Victoria, we, I, I don't have the picture. Yeah, I checked. It's right here, but I just don't. Uh, let me see again. Oh, you put it in a moment? I cannot see moment right now. No, I, I don't see. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I've got some communication problems here. Um, Okay, I can type you something if you can see what I'm doing now. Okay, I try to get a picture of the process, but I, any of you make uh, know how to make it? You can describe the process. 
I can describe for you if you like. Uh, just to, you know, uh, soak the soil beans for overnight and then grind it with a blender. And then, um, okay, now you can see uh, on her form. So we, we soak the soil, soil bean. You can get from uh, uh, grocery stores. And then uh, you, you, blind, you use a blender, uh, grind it with four times of water, and then um, use a cheese cloth. Actually, what is the cloth? Uh, nut milk cloth. Nut milk filled bag. Fil filled, filter bag. Nut milk filter bag. Can you see the picture of this? Okay. All right. And then you um, use, a, use a big um, boiling pan uh, to filter it. So I, I'm doing this hard work. <laughs> you squeeze out the, um, all the liquid from the, the bag, the filter bag. And then uh, you'll see the, uh, this, uh, what they call the, 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 the remnants, the, um, the sh from the, the shell, you know, from the shell, the beans, uh, whatever, uh, the, the raw part, the, the rough part. So just the, the, the very fine protein rich uh, liquid. And then you boil it after boiling using uh, a very low uh, kind of, um, very low boiling temperature. It's boiling, but not, uh, um, you know, forming. Simmer. Sim simmering, simmering for 15 minutes. And uh, you got a delicious drink right now. Without any, um, if you buy from uh, uh, stores, you may get some other things in it, you know, like uh, sugar. We don't need that or any other you know, additions. So this is a natural soil milk for, with four times of water uh, from, uh, with this, uh, the soil, soil bean. One cup of uh, uh, soil bean, four, type, four cups of uh, water. That's what uh, we got. One cup of soil Soaked, uh, soaked soybean, not the dry bean. So it expand. Okay. Thank you for the information. Where's your phone? Okay. Um, so with the soil milk, I I created this version, which is a, a very cloudy kind of uh, effect, um, but it it is semi sized. It's not. It's not. Uh, um, it's not good that when you paint on it, you know, it will not uh, bleed as much as the, the raw one. So it's semi-sized. And the, traditionally, we, we treat the paper with the soil milk. We, I think the, in the market, you can also buy that, but we don't carry that because it's so, much, it's so easy to create. It's fun to do it yourself. So let's, let's, do, let's try uh, something different because I try to... Um, create a painting with both. So we've got some hard, hard spots, maybe on the highlight part, you know, so um, then we, 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 we also got some soft ones. Um, after that, um, yeah, then we, we, uh, we'll see what uh, look like, okay. Um, Henry? Yes. I have a question. Um, I didn't quite understand. Did you use the splatter technique with the soy milk? Yes, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, oh, okay. Let's watch. Keep watching. Okay, I'll, I'll use a little um, uh, white ink, white ink to start with, just to show you difference on the same page, some same paper. Okay, is that a good idea? So you can see um, both on the on the same page without, you know, uh, trying a different paper. So I I put a little bit. Let me show you. I cannot see my hand. I want to make sure you you see this process. Okay. So I'll, you don't have to see details. So I just do this. Um, I, I use a, use two different uh, brushes. One is a um, 
the ink. Because to save ink, I don't want to use the whole, uh, this is very expensive. So I just loaded the brush this way. I don't mind if it drop, drip a little into the milk because this is the, I'm not going to drink it, right? So, so I just put a, okay, I got a little bit uh, splattered there already. So I just keep continue, continue with that happy accident. Uh, see, that's a, too much. So we need to, uh, to do it gently in the beginning. So it's very likely to get a large, see, you knock it like that. So you better um, do this outside the paper just uh, ignored, I mean, avoid the initial accident. Then you're more kind of control. You see, that's what, that's what I got here. Just the uh, knocking. So this brush works the best. This is a bristle uh, paint brush or barbecue brush. It is, they're the same, I think. Then I, I knock this way with my, uh, index finger under the, so the, if you do this without anything, you can also, uh, but you need to make a sudden stop. Instead of like that, you got a, a, a line, unless you want to create a you know, storm, like a, um, like a snowstorm, you can do something like that. But otherwise you, you stop in the air, see? You need a little practice. It's a, and you can, you can also do this, but uh, it's a different, you, you, you paint like that. But now the brush is exhausted. I, I, I just use one stroke principle, no reloading. So I create a uh, um, different consistency like that. <clears throat> okay. And uh, the next time we're going to do the, the other half with a, uh, Maybe they could be, you know, overlapping. But if you don't want the dust to smear, you can dry it right now with a, a hair dryer or just we just use a iron. Okay, uh, you can you can if your iron is clean, that uh, you can just iron directly. But it's uh, safer to use a we just use a piece of uh, paper to protect this the. Uh, painting surface without to get any any uh, dust from the iron. So we, we try this. Okay. We kind of heat set it. Oh, I I realized that uh, the gelatin may turns yellow. Um, after you use heat, I don't know what what's in it. Oh, that's a, that's something I didn't expect. I think they burn it. Interesting, maybe they got something else in it. Um, interesting. So uh, better let it dry by itself, you know. I, but it's okay, we, we need some uh, yellow. Anyway, in the, in the cherry, it's a hot pink. So some yellow is, uh, is, is okay. Pure, pure white is too cool. Uh, it's like a snow, right? Some yellow is fine. Um, this is an unexpected uh, accident. I hope it, it will be a happy one. It, can you see the yellow? It's from the transparent white. So they didn't uh, ask you to dry it with the iron. I think if you heat it, I think it's something, um, some chemical in it turns the, the yellow, but that's fine. We will we, we learn from, from this. I, I don't mind, you know, the yellow is good in our uh, painting. So I, I was, uh, before I was thinking to add a little bit uh, uh, yellow or, you know, like a gamboj yellow or even the uh, yellow ochre in the, in the white, because I think the white is uh, too much like a snow, you know, like this, it's, it's just uh, like a snowflakes. So a, a little yellow. I don't know what happened, but uh, it just um, divine touch. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use this uh, this bowl of uh, soil milk 
to add uh, something on the ground so it will be uh, softer or also in a, in the background maybe and again we can test a little bit just to avoid the initial large blobs okay now it's starting maybe we, we can do something here yeah perfect You can overlap the two. I think it would be interesting to see because this is a softer size, like a semi size, right? And I, I leave this area. Uh, look at the picture on the left. That's the picture I'm going to do. It's a narrow park with a deer. Um, this soy milk is not a uh, for resist, so I can still paint on, uh, paint on it. It just creates some uh, uh, interesting texture. So let me exhaust this. So you don't need much, actually. Yeah. Just the whole paper, I think, could be. Um, Okay. All right. That's all I need, I think. Now we can uh, wait it to dry. Um, while we wait, I don't want to iron it to create more um, unexpected, unexpected uh, colors or something. Maybe this, the, I did iron this. I don't see it. Uh, yeah, I, I did iron this. This is the milk. I mean, this is the soil milk. Soil milk. It has an interesting cloud, cloud pattern uh, with this, the, the hard edge. Uh, so let me just put it aside to let it dry. And we tested this to see what if, <clears throat> what if we, we paint um, after this, you know, you can, you can do the splatter after you do the trunk. Um, if we still can, you know, paint on the, the uh, splattered uh, sized and semi-sized paper. So let's do both. <clears throat> so I'm going to use, uh, uh, let me use a good brush here. You know, uh, I would use some long bristle brush. You can use a soft brush, uh, like super wash. Uh, this is an old super wash brush. Uh, you can use a, uh, a mixed brush, like this Fubosh landscape brush. I think this would be good. Uh, it's a mixture of a soft and the, it's quite stiff. So this one also is a, the larger version. And you can use John Da Chen's uh, killer brush. Let me just use this. Chains. This is quite large, but uh, we tried to do it in just one load. I soak the brush in water. Um, let me show you the camera here. So you can see my water. Okay, I, I just soak the brush. So it's clean water, right? And I use uh, uh, leftover ink from yesterday. I, I put some water in it to, to keep it uh, um, moist without uh, become uh, too dry. So I I can use the use this so you can see the darkness of it. And on this painting, it's a pretty um, light. There's no dark on the tree. Uh, only a little bit, that's probably it. So you can dilute it with a little water to get a gray. So it's about half of the brush. Now it's loaded with this. And uh, I'll add more water just to 
and then a, a little bit dark to the tip. So I got a gradation um, from from dark to light. I'll start from the the branch uh, right in the middle. There's a zigzag one, so I'm going to do. Um, and maybe you can start from the, the trunk, but uh, there's some uh, dry, very dry brush. Uh, maybe there's something like the, 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 the white, um, what, are, what does uh, protective uh, paint? In China, we always see that they, they put this to prevent from uh, maybe some disease or some, this white trunk. But I, I think maybe the, uh, that's why the, we see some, some uh, flying white, but you don't have to paint those. Um, just to, um, concentrate on the um, negative space of uh, the trunk. Uh, yesterday I talked about a character uh, eight. It's composed of, uh, uh, if, you, if you write the uh, letter, uh, the number eight in, in uh, zigzag form. So, you can you can do this with me. Uh, I start with uh, the the sequence is like the eight, but I I exaggerated the top part and I condensed the the lower part like that. Okay, so that's um, well. The the actually the principle come to to um, help you when you. Uh, don't know where what to do next. So we, now we try to identify the the, the uh, uh, numbers. So it could be very hidden because we don't want people to really see exactly. You know, it could be this area. Roughly, it's a it's a it's a two diamonds shape, right? And uh, we can create more diamond uh, shapes. Just to... it's interesting to paint sized, a semi-sized um, surface. It it, it creates um, you know if you just draw a smooth stroke, it become rugged like this because the the dots um, help to prevent. Uh, prevent the, the ink from uh, um, absorb, absorb uh, entirely into it. So you, you, you create this kind of uh, natural texture. Okay, you can, you can add uh, the lower part of the tree. It has some kind of a uh, uh, root, but uh, very, how to say? So he he used a lot of pushing stroke like that, pushing pushing up, pushing up like that. Okay, and push, push, and uh, something like uh, like this. Okay, push, pull, push, and the, here's two squares. So break that with a. Uh, um, is a line. So, yeah, see, I make a, uh, angular turns instead of just curves. There are lots of angular turns. You can have, uh, you, you, instead of draw a, straw, a straight line, you, you do something like, you know, zigzag, zigzag. That's, that's the, but you vary the, the distance. Um, so they, they don't, um, they're not equal. See, this is longer, this side is, is shorter, and uh, you can create another crossing like that. Cross. In, Ch in Chinese uh, painting, we use the character woman to uh, represent the the shape it's a probably like a half you know this area 
like a like a character, uh, two diamond. I mean, uh, two. Uh, yeah, just like a, a a triangular shape, but not equal triangle. Just uh, like this, you know. Okay, and you can you can create some uh, um, branches without without uh, identified, you know, all the um, line, you know, because they're they're uh, flowers. You already see some flowers, the block blocking the the ink, right? Now we. You can also just uh, paint without, uh, uh, with bricks, with absence of stroke. So the idea complete without uh, uh, completion of a you know, stroke, brush stroke. The ancient painter like uh, Wu Dao in, in Tang Dynasty, Paint the in a, in this kind of suggestive manner, and a poet in Song Dynasty, Su uh, Po, I think, described uh, his feeling when when he saw the mural. He uh, without did we don't have that anymore. Uh, but in, according to the description of uh, the uh, the poem, uh, he he paint the landscape uh, with a uh, uh, devour, 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 devouring, devouring qi, which means uh, the brush has not um, reached the qi take possession of the space already, the, the shape or the, the painting, you know, with qi. So the qi become um, the god of a brush painting since then, you know. Qi is the, the movement, uh, the energy flow. So you just create this kind of pattern of a nu or um, abstract, uh, like an eight, you know. If you look at uh, my practice before the class, I send you Early in the handout, you you will see the eight I purposely made. I think. Let me see where's the. Oh, this is my my version, and you can see the eight, right? So just uh, create this kind of uh, crossing uh, with enclosed uh, shape negative shape, okay. You can, you can do the tree trunk and then you splatter, but all the uh, splat, the, the transparent splatter won't re really show. So you can use white to splatter and then you glaze, you glaze um, that with a um, light pink. You can also um, put the color on the back of the trans, uh, the absorbent paper. So that's the advantage of uh, this kind of paper. You can paint on both sides. Okay, that's the, uh, the white transparent ink effect. I already washed the color so I can, I, I, I can test the texture. You could do the color uh, at the last, but this is the the soil milk. I just I just want to see how it feels uh, to paint on this. Okay, so uh, in composition, we we need to consider the horizon line. It shouldn't be in the middle, so it should be a little lower than half. Um, so the original is much lower. So I I will modify that on this on this new one. So I would just do around this corner, maybe uh, right here. So I vary the the shape, uh, the distance between each stop, each pass. 
or each turn to be precise, I think. Um, then you you cannot create the this kind of shape like that. Like that's an eight. You don't have to write exactly like a, a number eight. Okay, it's just a uh, kind of as a as a mental um, guideline. You know, not to something exists in nature, but you want to hide that in nature. Push the brush or make a the line uh, rougher. Pull the brush it will be um, smoother, right? So you, you want to combine this the you know the different uh, movement, and you can use uh, all parts of the the, the brush. He used uh, uh, the brush heel, the brush. Uh, uh, middle of uh, the west or uh, any 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 part of the brush is used not just like the tip sometimes okay if you watched his uh, video you see he exhausts the brush without reloading to so get all the uh, variations from dark to light from dry to from wet to dry um, with a large brush, you can do that without, uh, you know, reloading. Um, there are four directions of uh, the trunk, the branches in the tree. So we need to indicate something towards us. I don't know how to say it. the short foreshortened maybe. So here, the, we we try to indicate that some straight, then you, you uh, paint uh, in, in slant uh, strokes, left, right, something. But you, you want to avoid parallels. There are many things could happen. So don't just copy exactly, look for the shape you create the negative shape and uh, uh, try to make large and small uh, a varied space between the, the lines. Also, you know, think about some natural gesture of the tree, it's helpful. Uh, it, you know, at this point, you, you can just paint uh, with instinct, instinct, uh, yeah, tu intuition. Uh, if there's a problem, you start to use your rational mind uh, to correct it. You know, to to it must have you know problem with the uh, negative shape or dance and sparse uh, or something. So you can solve that. The bottom of the tree again is a. Uh, there's some. I, I don't think uh, we need to paint like lighting, but it's good to have some sense. So if the light comes from left, so we will do this side a little darker maybe, just to, to suggest that. I think this paper becomes really uh, semi-sized. You can see the, the absorbency has changed quite a bit uh, from a raw unsized paper to a semi-sized paper. Okay, the next, um, you, can, you can proceed with uh, the background. I, I'll add more water, dilute it. Uh, there's a tree here. The distant tree has the same idea. If I show you the example here, 
Okay, here's uh, our uh, queen's flower. It's a little, it's a kind of a spring flower, but without long stem like uh, cherries. Um, then this is a mini bonsai. It's a um, door, uh, a short um, cherry. You see that? Let me show you the profile. Yeah, if I turn this uh, tree slowly, and you try to identify the the character Ni or the crossing, the three line crossing. Can you see that? So here's the, uh, okay, here we are. See that, to see the holes in the, in the, around the, So you, you can uh, walk around a tree to find the best angle to see the negative space. So this is the bonsai, bonsai, cherry, bonsai, yeah. Okay. And uh, we, we just suggest some other uh, tree behind along this uh, horizon line. I'm not going to do the figures today. I will do the deer because uh, they have, uh, in the park they got uh, one one thousand uh, deer. It's an imperial. Past Imperial Garden, I think, Nara Park. Okay. So we, we try to do the tree with an edged uh, trunk here. Uh, it's kind of too, too straight. Let me see. Sorry, I didn't change the view. So you might want to create some kind of gesture here. But not to paint the chunk too um, solid. Yesterday, there are some uh, paintings uh, I saw in the student did this with all black. So uh, the, the black actually in the shady part uh, or the front uh, tree, just a little. Generally speaking, it's a very um, light, light kind of uh, feel watercolors, yeah. So let's go back to the, the paper we tested today, see if that works. Okay, it's still wet, it's still wet. Maybe I'll just um, hair dry it. I think the touch of the Heart, uh, the iron may create this kind of yellow. So if we try it with uh, only one air, it shouldn't, should be a problem, I think. Just a warm, low. So. If you, if you don't have uh, any of these two options, uh, the white transparency white ink or the milk, soil milk, you can use uh, a thin, thin um, gouache solution, maybe um, half, half water. Uh, yeah, just the, the white spatter. Okay. So, let me just paint uh, the tree again with this uh, 
on this paper, see what happens. So some part is still damp, but I, I think it is okay. It should be interesting if we, we just paint on the not fully dried uh, milk, soil milk may, may create some interesting interaction, some cloudy effect. So, Um, let me show you the reference photos with deer. So you have some uh, idea what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, okay. The deer. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll take close this one. All right, I, I, let me just show you the, the references. I uh, see this, uh, this close up uh, of a deer and uh, some uh, in, the, in the back. They just sit there on the ground. Not very hard to do if you, you know, we do just a few in the distance with legs. Deers is, I have a class, a special uh, focus on deer, how to paint the deers. With big ears, like a kimono goes. And this, this is the effect we try to achieve this, with this splatter. So you see the dark trunk um, behind the, the the light pink blossoms, yeah, that, that's the effect we, we try to do today. So you, you do the splatter first. And so, uh, but if you do it after, you have to use opaque. So we use transparent, um, transparent uh, colors. You see a lot of a lot of yellow, right? In the in the in this lighting, maybe uh, a morning. You can see the falling petals on the ground. That's why I splatter the whole paper, try to create this sensation. Um, and maybe, you know, if you like, we just draw from live picture instead of from the, uh, the master painting. How's that? So we, we need to choose a good composition or we can make up one because we can always paint the tree trunk. Um, Nicely, you can you know, you can you can make the chunk much uh, more interesting than this, but the the, the branches is a, is very nice on this one. Yeah, we can do some person. Um, this one is pretty good. The first one. Okay, let's just do uh, this one, see if we can get it. Okay. Um, I will make the tree larger, the ch chunk similar to the one we just did. And uh, you, can, you can put a, a deer right under the tree. Is that good? That would interesting I think so we can draw a little deer um, yeah we don't want to create the tangent so the tree could be a little as on the side on the side just the deer facing each other we, we just do the two facing each other forget about the one uh, facing right okay so but the diagonal is good. So we do this diagonal thing and make some zigzag shapes like that. And our number eight comes into play. So you see that Lu shape, like a leather uh, woman, right? And then we do this uh, almost like a Master Yaming's uh, branches. You see that, that crossing, it's just there is a small Lu again, okay. And uh, uh, I see this kind of crossing. 
in the master, um, yeah, means uh, painting, like a hanging, like that, it's hanging branch. And, uh, okay. Diagonal all the way down up. Uh, there's a lot of flowers here in this area. Okay, and then we just do a, a, a partial branch that welcoming the, it's like a bridge, an uh, arc, arc. Um, okay, that's a nice, but you want to create some, uh, uh, some sense of uh, 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 contrast between low and the high maybe. So this is a lower one, this is taller. So they're not equally uh, same heights. So this is another kind of a crown, that crown is above, that goes kind of down. Here's a little sky called, okay, so that's good composition. And we do a distant one because the brush gets lighter. Uh, so I just do this here, that's behind. So we, you can you can make this even darker, but that's in the front. That suggests a tree on this side, outside the, the frame. Okay. And uh, so some some trunk there. Look for the eight when you got uh, lost. Don't know what to do. Look for the eight. Don't think about eight at the beginning, but once you have the first joke, you start thinking the second one, the third one uh, with the crossing. Uh, the trunk gets smaller and uh, lower on, near the horizon. Okay. So he just used, uh, you see the dark uh, kind of uh, vegetation along the horizon that separate to the white um, petal, uh, petals covered uh, ground. That's a nice uh, effect. So, and you can have some deer uh, break that uh, horizon line. So you don't need to draw a continuous line. Uh, su just to suggest the horizon would be good. And that, that stop there. You can have some, uh, there's a deer on this side that, uh, we don't want to do the uh, camera view like a, a deer is very large in near the, the lens, which is not good. Um, so this one, it's actually not too bad. It, it, it's probably shot with a telescope. So don't have that uh, distortion uh, foreshortened like on a very uh, large for, uh, foreground. So let's uh, see some other pictures. Just, you see that trunk, <laughs> the big trunk on the corner is nice. That's what I got here accidentally. So we just uh, just paint a little uh, root. That's it. Just uh, okay. And uh, we'll do the deers later. Okay. Okay. This one doesn't have any. Any uh, thing blocking the view, okay. so you can see clearly on this corner. They have this kind of a shape spread to the side, so you just create that kind of a feel. That kind of arc. Arc. This is a, the whole thing is an arc, uh, arc um, composition. Yeah. So that that arc should be. Kind of frame the whole picture. The, the rhythm of uh, 
this, uh, you know, some dance and sparse. Um, here, I, I, I don't have space for that trunk, but it's a nice trunk there on the, on the left side. Um, let me see if I can just put it there. Well, it, I think I, I, my original idea was uh, this is lower, so we'll just keep it uh, lower. And you can have a diagonal uh, horizon. I mean, it's like a, yeah, it's not a flat uh, ground, you know, you can have a little diagonal here. And uh, this is kind of uh, too level, I think. So we can just break that a little bit. There's another chunk behind or something. Some a little fine tuning. Okay. Yeah, that's a um, that's the ink work. Then we will wash um, the the color after the ink gets dry. Okay. Um, yeah, the branch may be too much, so try not to to uh, try to be minimal. Minimal. So you got some some uh, uh, suggestions that the the viewer filling the the blank. Okay. Let me just dry it with the iron, and we will continue. This is my my illustration I did in yesterday's class. The character woman uh, in in a in a, a seal script or clerical early script. So it, it's not a literal. Um, it just suggests like a, you know you can use number eight. That's why I, I I just tell them to think about abstract. Uh, like a squish uh, number eight, but don't don't divide equally. So you create uh, some holes uh, in a diamond shape or maybe triangular shape uh, in between round and square. I think the triangle or diamond yeah, triangle is, fine. is yeah. uh -huh. it's more understandable because. Right. I don't find eight, I can find. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, they just use a new. I don't know how to interpret it. It's a half new, half, half, you know, when you, uh -huh. you know, okay. like a triangle is a half, half new. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I think this yellow is a little bit uh, too, I don't know, it's just accident. Let me see if I can alter that. Uh, we can use uh, just the regular watercolor. I got some here. Uh, this is a uh, magenta, I think. Oh, uh, you can use root. Let me see what I got here. Let me just use Chinese color. See if it... root and carmine. That's what I used. Carmine is uh, three ninety. And uh, root is uh, four zero. Zero. Four hundred. You 
you can just use comma and then put a root uh, aside just when you need to cool it to darken it you can use you can use either um, indigo or root root is a little bluish dark pink so I'll make a, a, a thinned evenly you know you add maybe I don't know how much maybe five percent is enough it's a lot it's a hurry too much um, let me just take the paint off Henry I have a question yeah uh, if I use Fu Bao uh, uh, brush uh -huh. uh, to use the white ink will that damage my brush no, no, no. Uh, you clean the brush. It, the white ink uh, will crystallize, maybe, uh, but you wash it before it gets crystal crystallized. It's not a glue, so it's, it's not going to damage the brush. You can use uh, that. Yeah, wash the brush is fine. So, um, if I use this this intense color on the back side, it, it, it might be in, uh, good. Just you know, because it would be lighter on the front. If I use I, now I can, I, I want to cover this uh, yellow, so I will use this. See if I can cover that. Yeah, the, um, yeah this, this must be dark enough to cut the, at least stronger than the yellow tone I got. So I have to use uh, stronger. It's like a morning color, maybe a little orange. Yeah, it's more like the you know the the photograph we're looking at. Okay, <laughs> just that's my main tree. So I add a little more water when when I proceed to the. I already got some yellow and in the dust. So I don't add yellow to get that uh, hot hot. Hot pink. Yeah. So I just go with this uh, single tone. I get all the variations of uh, light pink because the the uh, uh, we got both resist. You know, one uh, some hard edged one is the white ink, and the soft ones are the uh, this soil milk. Pink. Do you have soil milk in your kitchen? No, I don't. You don't? Okay. <laughs> we didn't cook. We didn't make our own. Oh, you buy the ready-made. I don't know if you buy the ready-made one. Do they have the plain ones? I think you can buy the plain ones, right? They come in uh, bottles. Some with I, sugar, but some just plain. I used the, the white ink and add yeah. some water to it. I water. think it came out pretty good. Oh, good, good idea. That yeah, that will create the softness we we got from the milk. I think yeah, that's a good idea. Very creative. Yeah, you can add. You have to test the uh, to what extent you want to use. Yeah, yeah. So we got um, some yellow uh, in, in from the dot. I I I got so that's a nice orange color now. I hope uh, it will stay. Okay, so. Now I can just uh, got some blue. So yellow, red, and the uh, blue always make a painting looks believable, <laughs> you know, more natural. Or the mix of a uh, blue uh, with a, a little a magenta, you you get some some uh, um, purple or lavender color. That's what I'm getting here. So I don't have to use uh, pure blue, just the suggest of a bit of blue right there. And you can have more blue along the horizon. You see a lot of lavender there, right? So you can, cut, you can use ink also. Let's do that later. Um, so sometimes we, we, we try to change each layer so you don't get muddy, right? So, let me finish by an overall wash on the ground. I see a lot of yellow on the ground. 
maybe a, a little greenish. We, we, we keep it uh, simple. We don't use green, just the uh, varies of a uh, uh, pink. You know, the, the lesson I learned from watercolor is that you find the basic color, uh, then you vary it on the yellow side, or on the blue side, and the red side. So just the more yellow on the ground, the more blue. You can use rouge. I haven't used rouge yet. Diluted the rouge with the. Okay, I got some dirty color here. So it's just some uh, ink and the rouge. You got a, a muddy color. Maybe you can you can just wash the the trunk with this to create some uh, some brown. Very watercolorish, okay. And uh, just dilute that. Okay, let me finish by. Oh, ha we have to do the deer. I'm not sure if we have uh, enough space for that. Maybe up just two. Okay, so I put this corner darker in the shade under this tree. And I will create a little uh, tunnel. It's a uh, maybe, yeah, a tunnel kind of along the, the in, under this arc. OK. And uh, let me get a little, a little bit. Uh, because the, the, this part is in the sky, maybe, or some have some blue. And then some more blue along the horizon. Some yellow, actually. I see a lot of yellow here. Some yellow. So blue and the red and yellow, uh, blue, red, and yellow, three primaries. I got a gamboge, um, some. Uh, Basically, a pink painting. So you can wait it dry or just a uh, uh, hair dryer. It's a hair dryer. I think uh, my painting gets too colorful. It's like a like a plum, not a peach, and not not a cherry. Some reason. Okay, let me. Let me use the absorbent paper in the uh, iron, iron edge. So maybe we got some uh, color off. Some uh, semi size paper here. Let's see. Let me just blot it. See if I can get some off. I can see the steam. The rice paper uh, will dry lighter, uh, but when you mount it, it will come back. The bright, uh, it will become almost like wet. So this is a, a little bit tricky. That's why I, I would mount it to show you, you know, uh, the, the final result. And you should at least uh, test that so you can see the effect after mounting. So you got 
no surprise. Um, it's dry now, so you can see the, the, the color is almost dry here. So I'm going to do the deer. It's a, it's a, it's kind of brown. So we we can use a little bit. Uh, I the makeup like brown maybe just use the three primaries you know and ink, some some mer some muddy color, <laughs> diluted. It's uh, good. Yeah, I got some amber left over here, some amber chip here. That's all I need, I think. And you can get some red and then yellow and some blue, you get the brown, right? And you should you, sh uh, you should have a cool brown, brown maybe and the dark part and a, a more orangey maybe on the right. That's the watercolor thinking, but we just do the, if we just do the silhouette, we just use, you can just use ink. You can use a smaller brush if you like. I try to get it done in one stroke. So let's see. Just the brown, gray. But it has this uh, pink, in, you know, all over. So you, you better have some red, more red than and you want to see, let me just test. Should be not too dark, it's in the light. So we just do an oval shaped back first. With a, it's a like a rock, you know, don't think it's deer yet, just a rock, kind of. It could be a rock there. <laughs> All right, and then another one is a little darker. And I just put a little more indigo and the ink uh, on, the, on the, it, there's a dark tail or something there. So there's a distance between the two, but they're facing each other. So at about the same level, I just push the brush up like that. And then a little bit up to get the neck. You can do it in two strokes if you want. And then uh, I just use the tip of the brush I can use a smaller brush, definitely. I want to mess up with this. I can use a large brush, it's not easy. So just use it. Okay, I just kind of suggest, you know, I think uh, it's kind of hard to. It's sitting on the ground. Right? Uh, the neck should be tall, taller, definitely. So this, uh, this should be a little taller. Okay. Yeah, once I start depicting, it's kind of hard. Uh, if you just get the the suggestion. And you can you leave space between the stroke. Yeah. The proportion is right. If the okay, no 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 feet, it's good. I just see this is like a triangle, maybe triangle. And uh, the light comes from right. Uh, that's, don't worry, just just the profile. Okay. And we do a standing one, gazing uh, here. So it should be about the same size. No, no, uh, 
Let me see. We can do it in a distance near this tree, yeah. Just the back of you see the long leg. And leave a little white tail, I think. Yes. Uh, Cotton tail, right? They call it. I don't know what's the name of the. There's a there's white white tailed uh, rabbit in our area. It's called the cotton tail. Just a, a suggestion of that tail. There. If you can do horse, it's almost like that. But the leg is much skinnier. Yeah, it's just like a horse. Yeah. It's just profile of that. And you can do some uh, in the distant, just a suggestion. The angle is important, the, the bend, you know, direction. You can look at the picture, maybe enlarge it so you can see which one I'm talking about. This one right here, see that. Uh, um, you see, or I change the direction. You, 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 you do not need to identify just something between, uh, between like and the dislike, uh, resemblance and dissemblance. That's the, like the word. So just emphasize on the profile and yeah, just a little bit just like uh, riding a stick figure you know just one stroke the way it, it doesn't matter if not accurate and you know, or not just let people know you are writing the word for deer not uh, uh, something else, just like a stick figure. I did a horse uh, based on a photo the other day uh, from a photo taken by my brother in um, Yunnan province, a very remote area in China. Very nice picture. So I, I'm familiar with this gazing, gazing um, Horse, kind of. I just did that. There's some some overlapping there. You can just dot uh, a few on the horizon. Some dots, you know, some some brown dots. It will be interpret it as a deer in the distance. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I did. Good enough? Okay. So I still want to see the whole picture. A little bit too color, too much color, like a watercolor. Um, that's why you know you don't want to copy the photo. You want to simplify the what you see into a, a simple statement. You know, just the one color, maybe ink and the color, one color with a, a little bit variation on the. Yeah, so contemporary painters uh, tend to use a lot of uh, washing technique. Fubashi also does this, the, all the Nanjing artists, uh, Nanjing uh, landscape painter, 
the third. Uh, but they don't, to the extent, of paint the shadows, you know, like uh, the Western painter would do. Shadows. Chinese watercolors. They call it uh, the Cai Mo, uh, watercolor ink painting, or ink and the color painting in the 50s, but it's short lived movement. Then there are uh, painters like Qian Songyan and uh, Huang Binghong, uh, Qi Bai Shi. Uh, they insist a Pantian show is the most uh, important figure in the. Uh, also in Taiwan, the, uh, the, the three masters we talked about, Huang Junbi especially, uh, they insist the pure, uh, stick with the pure classical tradition without using Western techniques. Of, but some, you know, perspective. But the, uh, the essence is a Chinese body, a uh, Western style. Uh, anyway, that's uh, just an experiment. I don't really care about uh, you know, West and East. Uh, I think we eventually will meet at the peak of any media. You, know, you can use oil, and uh, just like a Chan Da Chen said, you know, we will meet at the peak one day. So, it's all possible. It's kind of a challenge if you have partial um, wet and partial, I mean, uh, dry, Paper, a dry painting, but you, when you do the add color, you need to estimate, you know, what the, when it dries. So it may look dark, but you will dry it lighter. And you, you can tell by experience, you know, how much, uh, uh, what's the value or tone you need to, uh, to paint to get the desired intensity. So, Let's see if we have uh, time for something else, or if you want to see more finished uh, on this earlier test. How, 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 any questions or how, how are you doing? Uh, Henry? Yeah. Hi, I, I had an invisible ink that I used, but I realized that my error was, it was this one, but it's very old. And um, I think when I tried to put wash on the painting, like I only got a little ghost of alum there and the wash kind of killed it. Um, so I guess that was an error that I made, um, but it could be that this is just very weak, very old. It's got a lot of alum floating in it. I, um, I don't know. I think, okay, here, here, here's my experience with that. You have to use a raw paper. Uh, if it's semi-sized or, or on, on mulberry paper, it won't work. Wow. On sized paper, it completely not work. Forget wow. about it. Yeah, I think you're using wrong paper. If you're yeah, using well, I, I'm using Sumi paper for this. And, um, but it, it, is, it is, I think it's semi-sized actually. semi size. oh, okay. I don't, I don't know about that paper, but uh, First of all, you have to use full consistency, which means don't dip the, the don't wet the pen, uh, the brush. You wet the brush with this, with this ink directly. Yeah. Okay. But uh, uh, Ping said she diluted it. It, it. it works for her. Ping, can you comment on the consistency of the ink to make uh, it? I don't know if it's okay. I just show you. I think okay. yeah, sure. uh, maybe it's a still too strong. Now I see it. Okay. I, I don't see the your picture. Can you show your result? Can you see it? Let oh. me see. Uh, uh, you, see, you start video. Yeah, okay. Now we can see. 
Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, this it's one. too strong, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, we got a backlit effect, pretty nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see the dots, it's it's good, yeah. I see the dots on the trunk, that's what you got, right? From the, yeah. This, yeah, it works. So you use the uh, unsized single shuan, probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same um, I used today for the, uh, for, for the testing. Okay. Henry? Um, yeah. Henry, I came in late because of the time change. I forgot that there was a time change in the United yeah, States. Yeah, in the United States, right. <laughs> You'll have yeah. a recording for early... Um, yes, I'll uh, catch up with the recording, but I think at the beginning you put, um, you, you, you scattered transparent ink over the, the paper to begin with, is that right? That's right, yeah, I scattered, I scattered the transparent ink and then uh, uh, dried it with iron, but that turned that ink into yellow. So better not to use uh, iron, use a hair dryer or just wet it uh, to dry. That's where you got the yellow, okay, okay. Yeah. The yellow was uh, created by the accident. Uh, the, uh, the hair dryer burned it, make, make it the yellow, so. Uh, or patience. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened, uh, just uh, with that transparent uh, uh, ink, you don't want to iron it, just uh, using a hair dryer, maybe not to touch it with the uh, iron, I think. Yeah, it Could just- Can you do the same thing with white paint? Uh, you can use the white paint, yeah. Should I try that uh, so we can see the result? Uh, I can show you some early works, if you don't mind. Uh, the, the, I, I learned this technique from day one. So let me share some screen with you. And then let me bring back myself first. Okay. Um, whoops. Spot for everyone. Okay. Um, let me find a folder with my, my paintings. I did, uh, uh, Henry's, okay, here. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you this painting. I'm gonna press this one. Okay, enlarge it. Okay, this is my uh, first uh, uh, creation of a, a landscape when I was uh, in middle school or uh, junior high. Um, at the age of 14, I started this and uh, I do have the uh, um, teacher, uh, Huang Chun Yao, he's uh, the um, assistant, he was the assistant professor of uh, Fu Bao Shi. He told me the composition. I also learned the cherry blossom method from Song Wenzhi, uh, one of the four masters of Nanjing. Uh, so I have a, you know, I, I from scratch, I, I improved this uh, composition and uh, uh, technique over and over again. So I did more than 20 tests, 20 attempts. So I, I see my progress, you know, uh, in, in less than one year, I, I did this final version and uh, uh, got uh, noticed in the, in, uh, got recognized by the, in, the um, <coughs> in uh, province show and uh, use uh, fine art show and it got published in the newspaper. So this was uh, the same technique. So in this painting, I dot the, the white dots with the uh, pure white, okay? On, on mobile paper, on the front side of the pure uh, the paper. You can see they're not even the, um, Okay, I, I did the trunk, the tree trunk first, this, this, this trunk, and I leave some uh, space. See that, that space between, some do not have, uh, some light ones, you don't have to. So you don't have to leave all the shape, but between the tree, you, you leave some space for the crown, right? So I dot this one by one, it would take, like a half day to do this. The whole painting takes three days to finish. Um, and then I, I wash 
the back with the carmine and some roots in the shady part. You see the dust is thinner or sparser you know, less in the in the uh, in the shady part uh, around the the trunk in the in the center of the the, the umbrella, right? So the dots uh, should have, you can have some overlapping, but uh, probably yeah for cherry I would overlap more like this. For uh, this is like plum, it's spar it's more scattered. Yeah. So you can do this one by one without the splatting tech, uh, tech brush. You can dot it. Uh, I did this uh, in age fourteen and published in at the age of fifteen. So the yeah, this is a, another painting, and uh, this this one is a little later. I think it's seven, uh, six, seventeen years old. Uh, maybe I was. So uh, here's the same technique. There's some yellow there, I think. Um, so basically, it's a peach blossom, supposedly, among evergreen trees. Uh, you know, something late in late spring. This is an architecture landscape, uh, socialist realism, what they call it. It's a uh, water control system. Uh, they, they solved the, the flat problem in this uh, region. Um, anyway, and this is my latest work. Last year, about one year ago, uh, I did this elephant with a uh, with acrylic, but my initial painting was on um, paper to show the design. So um, but I, I use acrylic, uh, liquid acrylic on fiberglass. I did use the watercolor ground. It's a primer, like a absorbent ground to make the surface uh, um, a little bit feels like a paper. So that's the working process. And I did some birds. It's a commissioned work. That's my uh, picture. I'm doing the bridge for um, in my home. Uh, this is probably a little older than 15. It's 17. Yeah, this is a painting I did uh, uh, from the local. Uh, scenery spot called the Plum Hills. And uh, there's a, a um, elect, what they call the, this observatory uh, astronomy station there uh, on the back. And football should did the, the same thing. Um, and I try to uh, paint in his style, but uh, a real uh, chip from a real chip in the plum here. So this is plum, a, a little sparser flowers, early spring, yeah, rainy day. So this is the one I did uh, last year. I think I, I have improved this time yesterday on the same place called the White Agrant uh, Castle. So my composition is a little better as you saw yesterday, I think. Uh, this is study for the elephant. I did uh, an acrylic on canvas. And this is oil on canvas. I uh, a uh, plenary painting, but I didn't copy. I, I have the elephant um, painting in mind. I tried to paint the atmosphere, the color, uh, the feel of the, uh, in a local park I did plein air. And this is a watercolor on canvas. Okay, this one I kind of like is an impressionistic uh, uh, cherry blossom, just paint the mood. Even though it's uh, acrylic, you can see it, it, uh, the composition uh, and the, uh, the feel, you know, it's, it's Chinese. Uh, I, I concerned more with the, the qi, the movement, and uh, the uh, atmosphere. 
the mood. And this is a little more realistic. It was collected by Ter Terry in, uh, now she moved in Florida in her home. And this the, the one before it, yeah, this, yeah, this is the one I did um, outdoors that you saw earlier, <laughs> that piece. Uh, this is a elephant, the, the original elephant I did 80 years ago with an um, apricot, with a, an idea come from a, a, a actress, Li Bingbing, a celebrity. So this is a program to raise funds for the elephant in uh, Thailand, in Asia. Um, so the celebrity will paint either themselves or give a, uh, a theme to uh, co collaborate with the artist uh, so I was uh, the ghost painter for Li Bingbing. Uh, he, she, she chose the title uh, 100 Flowers of uh, Apricots because he was uh, a recipient of uh, Oscar, um, Chinese Oscar, the 100 Flower Award in uh, film. And uh, so she wanted 100 flowers with uh, her birth month flower, which is apricot. It's a kind of uh, like cherry, but without a long stem. So later I, I did uh, the, uh, the, the second elephant this year is a cherry blossom because it was uh, commissioned by, uh, it was commissioned by a couple uh, Japanese, and the husband is uh, born in Japan, Japanese American. Uh, so she, uh, he wanted the, the cherry blossom feel and the, especially the falling petals on the ground that's in the air everywhere. So that's the mood I, I did. They are very happy. I did a lot of study. I did the, the, uh, um, the small, see this on the, on the corner, the two tiny ones with the design, the same design. Okay. Well, Henry, this is Eileen in England. I usually join you at 5.30 my time and I've missed the whole chunk. So can you tell me what is the time change that you've experienced recently? Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're having the summer time uh, since last weekend. I should have notified you. I thought you might have the same time. Is it, no, no, is it one hour difference? One hour earlier, yeah. One hour earlier. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, we have yes, a I, I came tomorrow. in late too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Europe yeah. time didn't change, huh? I didn't realize. That. No. Europe China, uh, will change at the end of March. But... Oh, different times. Okay. okay, so it's one hour next time. Yeah, then you have to switch back. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, That's okay. I'll watch the video. Yeah, I'll I'll watch the recording later. Yeah. So, Thank you. Uh, Henry, may I just ask at the beginning, when you use the transparent ink, do you dilute it? Um, I don't, I don't dilute it today, but uh, someone in the class did it and get the um, soft, self soft effect. I think uh, you can, you can try both. To, to uh -huh. the, can you, the pure, can you mix the, it? Yeah, this, this is the undiluted effect. Uh, mm -hmm. the, it's a pure, here, let me see which side. I think I made a mistake. Maybe I was painting on the back side. I didn't know that. Okay, interesting. So this might be the front. This is, looks harder. I got confused which side was uh, the, the front, actually. And that's interesting. If, you know, I, I, I did the splatter on this side. I accidentally painted on the back side, I think. But that's a good, you know, you can use both sides. So this is a pure, pure solution. You can see the, the heart line, right? If you mm -hmm. use the, uh, I also use this uh, soil milk. I still have it here. You see, I, I made it uh, from scratch uh, with homemade, homemade. So there's no uh, anything other than soil. 
soya beans. So, soya milk. Soya milk, yeah. yeah. Henry, could you use rice milk? I have some open rice milk. Rice milk, I'm not sure about that. It, because soya milk has a protein, rice milk. I don't know if there's no uh, other substance, you know, it don't, no sugar, right? You can try, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a, uh, I think me, um, rice milk, mi jiang, right? Like you boiled, uh, uh, pear, like a boiled uh, let's say porridge, right? That kind of thing. It's more like a cornstarch, right? Cornstarch. Yeah, I think the starch can also work. Henry, I use milk because I didn't have any other. So I'm. I'm oh, milk, yeah, yeah, you can use milk. The, the, yeah, I use milk. Milk could also work. I don't know why they use the soil. Maybe we don't have milk uh, in the past. Soil milk is a uh, historical method, it's not a contemporary method. And they use it in the paper making industry too, to make a soil milk uh, paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good for. Finger painting with soil milk paper. I was requested uh, uh, by an online class student, uh, uh, Linda. She tried to produce the soil milk paper herself and asking me how to do it. Uh, I didn't try until today. So I hope Linda will, will try again to see it works. It, it, this is the soil milk. It's, it's very soft. You don't even uh, notice it. It's very soft edged uh, spots, you know. It's just a very subtle cloud in the paper, not a very hard edge like this, if you compare this two. And I tried to combine the two with this piece. So we did uh, some uh, in, in the transparent white and, and the bottom, the, the other part, like this part is our uh, soil. So I don't really see that much difference, so maybe just different in, in consistency. I think if you dilute it, you'll get the same uh, softness. So you might start with some uh, hard, pure one, then you add a little water and finish, you know, so at a spot you don't mind. Um, so this, this, is a, this is it, I think. And you uh, said, do... Henry, excuse me, you said you could use the white paint alternative. Oh, yeah, 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 white paint to test, all right? Okay, let's do, let's do another one with white paint. The white paint I showed you earlier in my early work, right? That's mm -hmm. the, the... But you put it on top. I mean, can you put it underneath and then paint over it? Uh, okay, you mean... Yeah, yeah, I, I did the... I did the paint, the white before the color, so that's that's the sequence. You can it, I can show you right now. Uh, so you you do a, a trunk. I'll just do a quick test. Okay, so we, we do this uh, uh, tree trunk and then we will use uh, pure white. And uh, um, okay, let me see here. We just use this uh, Chinese white. Okay, we got white. Uh, you want to dilute a little bit so it will it will dri drop on, on the uh, paper so you don't get the dry uh, strokes, right? Okay, uh, we can just use a uh, small, a medium sized brush and you use some water to dilute it. So you want to fully load the brush. 
Uh, should I do splatter? I forgot. Uh, do you ask me to dot it or you want to s just splatter? I think splatter. we don't have time to dot. Splatter. Mm -hmm. splatter. Okay, so we, we have to use the. Um, let me just draw. Let me see, where's the splatter mesh I have? Let me just use this. You can just. knocking on the on the top like this you hold the, the uh, brush handle pretty sturdily so it's not uh, not 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 too much spin back see if you if you just like spin back it will be or you can just do this and the end There's a big spot here. I want to disperse it a little bit. And then you can dot with the, with the brush just to, to adjust the shape, like the, the outer shape of the crown a little bit. Okay, now we, we dry it. We have to dry it. Otherwise, it will not uh, block the moisture. Okay. Uh, you can use hair dryer. Oops. Let me turn the voice. It goes all over my hands and my clothes. <laughs> okay, I turned the sound off uh, just to. Okay, now I'm going to wash the. Uh, color. You can do it on the back. Um, it's subtle, and you can use, uh, especially if I use overnight color with uh, uh, those uh, particle that like, uh, uh, you know, the pastel uh, the grains. So you, this will be on the back, so I don't really mind. You can you can use fresh ink. On the on the front, so the, uh, I use more rouge. Just do this the shadow part first. Okay, I I paint it. I 
you know, you still have some wet, some some dry, some uh, variations. Okay, then I use more rouge, maybe a little yellow to the rouge. I mean, to the carmine, carmine and the, this. Okay, I got more actually to use here. I just want to create some more drama so it's more intense than cherry blossom maybe. Let me just add more water. It should be like a white cloud, very thin color, right? So I just pour ink, pouring, pouring ink and that will create this kind of uh, soft That's it, I think. So this is on the back. Uh, it, it might look a little paler on the front. Oops. Um, another thing is you, if you turn it over, flip, you make sure this will not stand the, the white paper, but since it's all on the, on the same side, it should be fine. But if you put something on the ground, you need to be careful. So it's not going to stand the paper. I, I had this problem last class from the, the uh, Mountain Lou trail. So I got some spots. Okay, so you can see the white is like snow, right? It, that's why uh, I use a, a softer. So this is a, a little more dreamy, uh, you know, with uh, the soil milk or milk maybe uh, or is a uh, transparent white. So this is the, the comparison of the, the two. This, but if you use lighter pink, you might get a little softer uh, color. Let me just blot it with this color. Interesting. So. It's a new technique you're getting. So blotting, blotting the, the color with another painting create this kind of uh, interesting uh, effect of a texture, right? The nice, like it. So you don't waste any any paint. So you 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 kind of lighten this painting a little bit with the, the blotting, right? And you can you can uh, lighten it with uh, water, or even you know get some blue in it to mute it, because this area we don't want to we don't want it too intense. So we just use some blue to mute to. Darken it or mute it, and also here that also suggests the sky. And uh, what about glaze on the on the white? You know, you can use uh, uh, some color directly. Let me see so what color do I use? Okay, we can make it a little warmer with a, a little orange. Just to create some kind of warmth, so they they don't look like a snowflakes. You can use the yellow ochre, or ye I use yellow and a little um, rouge. I just. I just put some yellow on the white dots. How about that? It just change the temperature a little bit. I will. I wonder if we add a little pink to this transparent ink. Yeah, yeah, that that's a good idea. I thought that. Um, 
a little a little yellow, you know, because I, I made that turn yellow accidentally. But you can, I was thinking to put a little yellow to the white, because uh, uh, pink would be the contrasting ground, you know, color ground color. Anyway, so you want something maybe different than the the pink. So I was thinking the yellow, the light yellow. The pink will go over the will glaze, you know, because the like you dilute it, if you dilute the the transparent ink, it will not completely blot. So for this white, you see, I cannot even paint on too much. So you have to use quite thick hands to change the temperature or the hue of it. It's kind of hard to glaze. I think the transparent white may, but if you dilute the white, it might further, you know, don't, so it's a, it's a question about um, how intense, how thick the white or the resist is. So if you use less uh, white or less uh, resist with more water, then you might still, you, you can paint easier. Or the, you know, the overall wash may change the hue as well. So, so you can just paint the whole thing with the uh, pink. Yeah, you know what? Right now, I try to do that. Like I can use, I can just use a darker pink to change some white into pink. See, that's what uh, might work, but I'm not sure. So you you just have to. But this this just too hard. I think it. Uh, that's the the style I use for my early painting. It works, you know. If, if you use a very pale pink with a white, you make it the same feel of the, the white cloud. And you can still paint on it, you know, you can paint wet into wet, get some some uh, soft ones. So they're not so hard. There's some 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 that's blur. You can splatter on the wet. Also, you can still uh, spread, just spread. Henry, do you think use a white gouache will work? Yeah, uh, white, white gouache is the same, right? <laughs> this Chinese white is less, uh, less uh, transparent, uh, less uh, opaque. White gouache or, or titanium, tit what's it called? Titanium, right? Titanium white. Is that what you use? Yeah, I have two white. I don't know what's the difference. White but is more, even right. more opaque, I think. It's a more opaque, it's thicker. So the Chinese white actually is a, is a, a little less opaque. For true uh, gouache painter, they don't use white. Uh, they don't use Chinese white. They use uh, uh, the titanium white. So we, we normally use the watercolor gouache instead of uh, the Chinese white uh, for this, I think. Because the thicker, the, the we call it the poster white, you know, the Guanggao uh, poster white is a gouache, yeah. I use the gouache from the Guanggao. When I painted the bridge painting, uh, those are, I did with a, Gouache, yeah, not not the, the Chinese white, it, uh, just the bottle. Okay, so thank you. So see, I changed the the value of, uh, I mean, the hue of that, temperature of that. Now you can put uh, uh, maybe thicker dots on here, but that will make it more like a plum or peach or something. The red dots, just. Just break that uh, big blob. I, I'm solving this problem. You know, some people may have a big white, so then you can use uh, you can use uh, red dots to to break that, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, so are we at the time? Yeah. So see eleven thirty. Any other questions?
No? Good. So I'll see you next week. I haven't decided uh, which artist to do. The, the, third, uh, the Wednesday class will be on bamboo and uh, pandas. But in landscape, uh, we don't have to do the same, but uh, maybe some bamboo forest. I, I, I'm thinking. So um, I'll see you on, on Wednesday if you subscribe, if you participate in that one. Um, it's a good, uh, it would be fun to paint. Henry, yeah. uh, I tried to log in yesterday, but uh, uh, that lady gave me a link, but I cannot log in. So yeah, I just watch you the, on the video. Could, okay, right? yes. uh -huh. okay, you can use the, the ID. Uh, you should get the email if you are on the list now. You should get the email. It has a link, also the meeting ID. There's no password. They have to admit you. They, they have a list of participants. So they admit you. There's there's a person uh, in the in charge of the waiting room. So you wait at the waiting room. You have to wait at the waiting room to, uh, for people, for their uh, workers to manually admit you. Okay, so you, if you cannot get that, uh, you, you can watch it uh, on YouTube. They will send you the link also on YouTube if you register, yeah. Yeah, they say they registered me, but uh, when I try, I cannot log in. Uh, uh, just ask for the meeting ID. I think um, the meeting ID is the same. So I, I can give you that meeting ID. If, if you're already on the, on the list, that's good enough. So uh, I'll give you the meeting ID so you can enter it manually. You don't, um, don't use the link, just uh, enter the meeting ID. Okay, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Henry, I, I've got a question about the paper. Um, it keeps getting um, little balls when I do a lot of washes. I'm using a mulberry paper. For, or you mean like a ring And then I just rub it off, but Oh, the 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 fact is getting the surface gets uh, fuzzy, right? With the, yes. The, yeah, I um, I I will say uh, use uh, uh, you know when it's wet, don't paint you know too for too long. To you have to wait it to dry. Yeah. Uh, mm. Don't keep working on on you know to too wet surface. You can blot the. The paper with a, um, a rested painting, I'll say, uh, to reduce the moisture. Then you work on uh, with a soft brush. Um, don't don't rub it with the the, the bristle. You know, just uh, mm. paint very gently with a soft brush. It's, it could be a dry brush, but uh, very gently. Yeah. So you barely. Scrub it. You can okay. I think the word from uh, uh, our last lesson with uh, with that lady from France. Uh, she learned from another teacher uh, using the word pressing. I think dabbing is the English words. Dabbing. Dab. Yeah. Dab. 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 Instead of uh, rub. Dab. You dab. 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 That would avoid the rub rubbing, rubbing off the surface destroy the surface texture. It's when I do a lot of washes and get the paper very wet. It you, when you wash, you do this, you, you, you scratch it, right? You dab. Yeah. You, okay. You use dabbing stroke to wash. You understand? You mm -hmm. see, see what I do? I dab. I, you can use, a, you can use a, uh, not dry brush, just uh, you know, like this, you, you dab. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll try yeah. that. Dabbing, dabbing. You can you can use a whole brush. So for for the clouds, you you dab, you, you load, you keep you, you keep loading it so it's not too dry. So you you, you uh -huh. still have the softness without the brush trace, you know. So dabbing. So that's you, you may call it a stamping or, or pressing. Pressing, right? This is the, the French word is pressing. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'll send you 
the information maybe over the weekend when I decide um, which one to go. We we can do more uh, Nanjing masters like Song Wenzhi. He's uh, also a professor. Oh, I forgot to show you this book. Oh, gosh, if you're still there. Okay, here is the uh, book from my university, Ya Ming, uh, the master we studied today. It was uh, a, a guest professor or part-time professor of the university. Uh, so we have a, a collection of uh, all the, all the uh, professor and the, uh, the past and the present, including some masters from the same university. Let me put a piece of paper here. Protect this book. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, we we have a center for um, Oriental painting and calligraphy research center in Nanjing University of Nanjing University. So this is the uh, 90th anniversary of the university album. Uh, we had the exhibition. I was not in Nanjing, but they had the one one of my painting I did before I left. I think this was uh, 90, 92 or something, 91. Yeah, the, the university was from 92. So this must be 90, 1992, from 1901, 1902. So the university celebrated, uh, celebrated the 90th birthday. Chi Bei Hong was the uh, professor, the, the head of the art department of a, uh, the uh, university in, in uh, wartime and uh, also after war. I think the, uh, before, before 1950 or 1949, you know, the football shoe was also a uh, professor and uh, uh, some other professors. This is the painting by Ya Ming. He was uh, hired uh, as a guest of professor and also uh, Song Wenzhi, you know, this is the artist I'm considering to uh, Introduce. He used a method of a, a small pouring technique in his late years. I saw this uh, process. Uh, he, he showed us the process uh, on shikishi board. He, he poured ink and the color and the way to dry to create this kind of uh, dripping effect and then paint it based on the random if, uh, effect. And uh, some uh, students work some uh, faculty work, including mine, you will see. Um, okay, Th this is the, the professor in the geology department. I have a class uh, with him on the ge uh, geo he, he teaches geography uh, and landscape painting. So he has uh, uh, knowledge about uh, the formation of the earth, right? The, and then uh, he applied that in, uh, with traditional landscape painting. And this is my painting, um, my cranes. And Ya Ming saw this painting and uh, um, critiqued, because we had a, a monthly or bi-monthly um, critique uh, or gathering work. We, we, I think I painted it in front of him and he said, um, my my lines on the on legs has a masterful, uh, you know, it's a masterful stroke. So I was so encouraged. And uh, I, uh, that's the first time I heard someone using the word uh, uh, 大家齐相, you know, a sign of a master. So I, uh, that's really inspired uh, me to become a true master. So that stroke, he said, it was a masterful. But don't look at other part, just the, the legs on this uh, cranes. Um, yeah, that, that's Ya Ming's uh, um, memory, I mean, my memory of uh, uh, his comment on my painting. So he's very encouraging. Wu Zoren, he's uh, also was a professor of the university, but he, he paint pandas. We might do his pandas next week. Oh, Are we going to learn from Fu Bao Shi? Yeah, Fu Bao Shi, <laughs> a good question. Fu Bao Shi is the founder of Nanjing School uh, because I, I had several class already. I'm not sure if you 
still want to learn. But, uh, how many, if, if you want, yeah, we should go from Fubachi. He, he had his style formed before the, um, his personal style formed before the revolution. Maybe we can focus on that. And then after that, he's more like uh, the newer 19th school, you know, uh, with uh, uh, socialist realism. He painted most, Mao Zedong's uh, po poems, uh, lots of red mountains, you know, or skies, things like that. But his early works are very traditional. I probably would, would consider him as a, uh, you know, the, uh, old master style. He, he created a new style based on the old. So he, he has uh, his own uh, split, split brush technique. Yeah. Well, I second that vote on Fu Bao Shi and also on uh, He Bai Shu. Shi Bai Shu. Yeah. Okay. Shi Bai Shu is uh, in landscape. Yeah, it would be interesting. Ping, do you have the 12 pictures you, uh, of a Chibaisha Spanish in Mona? Are you interested in that? I, I was thinking to um, talk about Chibaisha's 12, 12 strips that was. I only saw the time. photos. Huh? I, I only saw <laughs> the photos of the photos painting. of them. Yeah, you yeah. didn't see them, huh? Um, because yeah, I, I I read the story where it, it was the record setting uh, in Fischer's painting the t the twelve twelve uh, strips of the landscape that he, that's his um, biggest um, yeah that 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 that, that would be a interesting yeah you can see uh, yeah I was uh, pointing to this. Uh, Chan Na Chen, he, he's also a professor uh, at once in, in the, in, associated with Lenin University. I didn't know that. He, he said, it says he, he used to be the professor of uh, the art department at the Central University, the former Nanjing University. So Chan Na Chen was also a professor too. And uh, this is my teacher's uh, work, Chan Zheng Ying. Uh, my, Flower and birds painting teacher. Hey, I, I have um, a very old book of with Fubashi paintings, and I don't know if the landscapes in the book are his. They might be another painter, but the whole. The oh, whole, let me see your your, your book. Okay. Do you think that's his? No, that's not the Fubashi. Is it yeah. some, some, uh, uh, is There's it? The other one okay. Oh, this is Chibashi. Okay, Chibashi. it's a collection of different books. What's the title of the book? Um, I think it's like 50 painters. Oh, um, yeah, Yong Bao Zai's. Okay, yeah, this is the, the, uh, Shi Qian Pu. It's a, it's a, man, it's a collection of, uh, um, like a decorated paper for point, poem writing. Yeah. So it, it's a collection of various it's artists, like eggplants. Yeah, beautiful. They are uh, wood block printed. Yeah, yeah, beautiful book. I think uh, the one you you showed is Chen Nian. Chen Nian is a Chen Ban Ding. He is the the mentor of uh, Qi Bai Shi. He's the the patron of Qi Bai Shi. Oh. Yeah, Chen Nian, Chen Ban Ding. You can oh. check uh, Qi Bai Shi's bio. He's uh, he's a uh, um, he taught him, he introduced him Wu Chang Shuo's style. Chen Nian was a, a student of Wu Chang Shuo, the Shanghai school. So he basically introduced the, the Shanghai style into Beijing, the capital. And uh, uh, it later changed the, the, the style of the uh, North. So they, they merged with the Shanghai school since Qi Bai Shi and the Chen Nian, uh, Chen Ban Ning. Yeah. That's the, the artist name. Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, there, I know everybody in this, uh, almost, you know, the living ones, but uh, except those uh, uh, like shit. Uh, yeah, so th this collection is uh, very valuable to me. So I, I was uh, uh, 
together with uh, all the teachers. This is my landscape teacher, Huang Chun Yao. He, he was a student of Fu Baoshi, and he taught the art history for Fu Baoshi when he was a uh, head of the Jiangsu Chinese Painting Academy. So he was part-time, uh, become part-time in teaching maybe. Uh, so he, he replaced him to teach the art history and the art history. Huang Chun Yao, that's my landscape teacher. He taught me how to do the, uh, I mean, during my creation process of uh, uh, the bridge painting. So I, I learned a lot from him. Through him, I learned Fubash's uh, split brush technique. Yeah, just a, like a brief uh, a collection of modern masters, everybody almost. And this is a, a finger painting, like a crane, someone did. Also a graduate of the university. And this person is my classmate. He is a professor in the art history department, and the, the PhD uh, professor, you know I mean? He, he um, advised a PhD program. Um, he used to be my classmate in Nanjing University. Yeah. This is, do you sell that book with blue hair and I, art? I used to have extra copies. Maybe I only have one extra. I, I have to check, um, but uh, I don't. I maybe not. Maybe I, if not, I, maybe I scan it into a digital copy or something like that. There is a there is a, it's, it's circulated only internally, but there is ISBN number. I, I can give you the number, but I don't think you can buy it because mm -hmm. it says uh, limited to. I think it's only in Chinese as well, so it would be hard to know the painter's names. Yeah, it's all in Chinese. I have to translate uh, all the names for you. Yeah, when I have time, I may do it. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, my, my first exhibition was in, uh, after I graduated uh, in 1983. I, I think this is probably not the first, but uh, it's one of the uh, exhibitions held in the, the springtime in various places. One time was in Beijing University. I went there with all the, uh, the, uh, the paintings. And this one was in Yangzhou in the garden of the Shitao residence museum. So in, in Shitao's hometown. And this, this is my first, um, I only have these two before I left <laughs> the, uh, the university. But uh, this is Ya Ming's uh, uh, yeah, means the landscape and the three gorges. That's a huge painting, mirror kind of painting. And uh, you can see my painting too. Oh, this is Song Wenzhi. I saw this painting process in a in an event. He taught us how to do the three gorges. He used a very small, um, stiff brush to do the whole thing. So everybody has a different uh, approach. I saw this painting too. It's a colleague. Uh, a classmate of my teacher, he, he painted almost like my teacher's uh, style, Zhao Lianghan. He, he's also a student of uh, Xu Beihong, uh, it's, you know, like uh, Zhang Zhenying's uh, classmate. Uh, my, my landscape teacher's classmate, Chen Xuegong, is also a famous artist. Uh, this is my, okay, my teacher's uh, peony. Peony with, uh, these are all black and white, but this is painting, I, my favorite, is in the collection of the university. Uh, the crayon standing on a plum blossom trunk. That, that's, uh, that's my early work. Okay. Uh, oh, we, we, we even have some uh, students from Japan we write uh, Japanese calligraphy, so, so we, we have a annual show. This is the catalog of that year. And this student uh, uh, is, uh, later I, I, I learned, you know, uh, he is uh, the classmate of uh, Victoria. Uh, Victoria is uh, in the literature department. I was a, uh, I was a faculty already. Uh, they are, probably at the fourth year. Yeah, this is a student, 
uh, in the same class as uh, Victoria in Chinese literature department, Zhu Yeping. I, I know later. And uh, yeah, that's the same person in my classmate who uh, is a professor in art history. And uh, some. Uh, anyway, it's 1985. So that, that's my connection with uh, the artist we, we discuss in this lesson, Yaming. Okay. Thank you for <laughs> your time. I hope you enjoyed uh, that story. Thank you for showing us those books as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye now. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. bye.